Hi everyone, it's Donna Doherty and I'm in my studio again and uh, we're going to do a project based on Matthew chapter 10 that would be uh, found in the Sunday Mass readings tomorrow. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that part of it, but I really wanted to share with you uh, one of the reasons why I chose um, this art project and it has a background story because uh, I used to go visit my grandparents that moved to Southern Illinois uh, when I was in high school and I got to go for like a month. I loved going. It was living in the country, not a lot of TV stations or um, things to do except explore. Uh, so for me it was a lot of fun and I loved my grandparents of course. One of the things that my grandfather did was that um, he loved the outdoors, he was hunting, he had beagles, you know, like hunting dogs, all kinds of things. But um, he also loved birds. So uh, I think that I got a love of birds from him, and I'm sure that my brother would say the same thing, uh, because he tried to do the same things. Uh, my grandfather had a parakeet that had a cage in the house, but he used to put it on his shoulder and walk around and let it sit on his finger and all kinds of things. Um, it was really rather cool. But the birds outside, he made a bird house uh, with a bird feeder, um, and it was called the feed store, so it even had like a front porch. It looked like an 1800s feed store or something, and, um, and we would watch the birds. So not only would the squirrels sometimes get up there and eat the food, that feed store was on a pole, so today's bird house is on a pole. But um, today's subject was sparrows, so I did a lot of research, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that um, as we look at the pictures that we're doing today and um, talking about how we are worth uh, much more than many sparrows, not just two. So you can see today's project is for the birds, uh, as I was talking about in my introduction. So today's scripture... Um, that we're talking about today from Matthew chapter 10 um, is fits together with some of the other scriptures that we talked about on Wednesday um, for the word is live. Uh, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord is in the first reading for tomorrow's mass. Um, he has rescued us, the psalm, Lord by your great love, answer me. Um, all of these concepts um, are great things to meditate on, but for today's project to discuss this story, um, I really focused on the fact that we are worth uh, much more than many sparrows. And in the reading, um, Jesus is saying, are not two sparrows sold for a small coin, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted, so do not be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. And those sparrows may not seem like um, very important birds to you. Um, they might be one of the lowliest birds. And I, when I was researching house sparrows, they um, are often thought of as pretty annoying. Because what they will do is they'll try to nest on your house in crevices, under the eaves of buildings. Um, I have robins that have been doing that this spring. Um, so every year they try to make nests um, on any of our uh, light sconces that are on the outside of the house. Um, so uh, we can find that sometimes birds can be pretty annoying. We have had birds with, uh, when they have nests and there's eggs in the nest, they will actually uh, fly and try to scare people away so that they could protect their eggs. So all of these concepts are actually things that um, we might encounter every day. But if you looked at these cute little house sparrows, I um, printed a couple pictures that I found on the internet because I wanted to get an idea of their shape and what they looked like. And when I found out um, about them, I also looked at what kind of house would they want to nest in if you built a birdhouse, because I like birdhouses. Um, but, and I have made them before, even as gifts, um, because my husband does woodworking also. Um, and then I painted them. Uh, so we have uh, different ways that we can look at birds and when I started to look at this bird I took my uh, black sharpie and tried to look at what do these shapes look like on here um, 
where would the, how would the bird be shaped so if you were to draw the bird um, would it be an oval and then a head on the top and where would its um, shoulder or uh, wings be tucked in how would you draw them and this one had great feet so I thought about using this one because you could see those um, toes and even the nails in this picture it's a really good picture as it sat on that piece of wood and the the beak so i challenge you to go outside as you um, look at birds and do quick uh, nature sketches i found an artist who um, does teach uh, he has some things on youtube his name is john Muir laws and he's done a couple of books um, so i found that he had this pdf so if you wanted to you could go to his website um, and in one of his blogs he explained how he was drawing um, this I think this was a chickadee but um, how he would figure it out and I thought it was interesting that he used the time on a clock to uh, help, help explain where the uh, line of the bird was so I was watching a little bit of him this morning and he talked about how maybe you should do this line like on the outside if this was the line of the bird and then make its head so instead of trying to do these two circles like he had here uh, it might be better to draw that line and then put the bird's head on and where is its beak and how is it tilting its head and where is uh, that shoulder for the wings going to be and different birds are um, shaped differently so these house sparrows i kind of liked the the positioning that they were in so i i tried to use those in my drawing um, so i thought i'd show that to you because um, you might think that it's really easy or um or too hard to even try to come up with your own drawings so what I did was I started uh, practicing like what size because I looked at how big it would need to be for um, what is a, the hole going to be if a sparrow was going to nest in here. And um, this is a two inch circle in diameter. So it would need to be that big like literal. And the house had to be um, 9 to 12 inches tall and it could only be 4 by 4 square for that base. So it could only be like this big inside. It wanted it to be uh, small. Now you could see when I was drawing with my ruler, um, I didn't even draw it right because this was four inches. So my center was off for my peak. And I thought if I do this, I'm not going to have any room to put my words or my birds on there. And that wouldn't work. So then I um, tried again and uh, I was drawing my birds on one side of the page and I was doing landscape and I drew um, another house and I thought this one would be you know pretty good it wouldn't be bad um, for this shape and then I could put birds on the right side of the paper and do a landscape but I wasn't totally happy and I did use this type of um, drawing for the basis of the one that I did on the coloring page but I thought about teaching perspective and the lines and um, looking at how they're not always parallel when you're drawing it because your perspective might be looking down or underneath or from above. Um, and then I decided that was too much because really what I wanted to focus on was the sparrows because that's what the story is about that were worth so much more. So what I did was I used my uh, light pad, which I just have like a Crayola light pad. Um, that is my grandson's um, but it's here in the house so I use it quite often or I use a window to trace so I looked at my pictures and then I tried to trace and come up with what would my design be you know like where would I put the words how could I fit this in and I wasn't totally happy still so um, I liked I liked the fact that the birds were sort of this way but I, I wanted the house to be smaller and um, then I came up with this design so I like took this one and went like if I put this on the landscape and I put the birds on the other side of the paper 
how could I fit those in and how would it look? So the now the birdhouse is far away. They are the focus, so they're um, larger and closer to you. And the birdhouse is a little farther set back. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I still wanted the birdhouse. So I looked at my examples and you can tell that in my drawing, I'll show you um, the first one that I did where I erased all my pencil lines after I uh, used my black fine point Sharpie to do this. Um, I did use these birds as my example and you could see how I positioned them. This is supposed to be this one. And um, as I was drawing, I realized that it was really going to be impossible for me to give you all of this detail um, in a coloring page. And would you be able to color this perfectly? So you'll see on my coloring page, it's not perfect. And my drawing is not perfect, but I kind of wanted to give you that impression that there are layers of uh, feathers here. And that it sort of went down like a line. It was divided, those feathers, from one side to the other. And give you a tail feather and the impression of the feet. So as an artist, sometimes um, we back off a little bit on those details to give you more of an impression of the bird than just a um, uh, what you could do maybe in a picture. So if I was going to do this, I would blow it up because you can um, see that this almost even looks a little bigger than the actual one, but it is traced, that um, I would probably blow it up and do it in a finer detail where I would have more opportunity to uh, fit in all of those things, um, all of those lines and the light inside there. I would um, be more particular about it. But since we're not able to do that, I wanted to show you that I drew this many times. And I suggest that if you want to learn more um, uh, how to draw things that that's what you do keep practicing so these are leaves that I um, draw all the time I guess I kind of like these leaves and I saw some pictures online that I thought well that's a kind of branch that maybe I want to have um, to fill in the picture uh, I didn't want to put big leaves around them and cover up the birds or distract from the birds so we have our house and I did put a cross on it and I imagined that was more like um, the uh, weather vane you might see on the top of a barn that would tell you, you know, which way the wind is blowing or whatever, but that wrought iron kind of look, so you could tell um, that my um, cross in my coloring picture looks a little more um, silver because I used black and white to make it. And I wanted to put some, some flowers in. I didn't want to put ivy growing up, but because I, I don't know if you realize that usually birdhouses um, are nestled into the trees or hanging from a tree, but they're not always, you know, surrounded in flowers when um, they're in nature. So, uh, and uh, the sparrows, I guess, wanted to be a certain number of feet off the ground and for, for the perfect nesting space. And uh, this is partly for their protection from predators. So um, they want, they don't want you to be able to get to their birdhouse. So we're seeing the birdhouse from far away in this picture with a couple branches and um, two of our house sparrows. I did put the words in and I tried to make them look different and interesting as I was doing my um, worksheet, the one that I started from. I have to tell you that I did the words numerous times, I guess, or moved them a little bit as I copied them because I thought this one had great space, but I started to run out of room. So I tried to fix that on my um, final copy. So this uh, was the first um, pencil or the second pencil drawing of this all together. And you can see I totally wrinkled my paper. This is copy paper um, when I was trying to erase all of the pencil because I had a lot of pencil and a lot of words and trying to fit things in. So that gives you kind of the background um, for what we're doing today. And this was our example. Here is um, the uh, final copy that uh, I did in black. So you could see I kind of fixed the sparrows word. I added some curly cues into the spaces like tendrils of um, vines or uh, branches that would be beginning on a tree and then I did uh, uh, send it to you or post it on Facebook in blue only because I wanted you to get an idea 
of what this would look like um, very light and so that you would have the opportunity to practice drawing by um, following along with my drawing. So you could go over these lines and it would be great practice to uh, look at how, how could you make these feathers. They're sort of laying on top of each other to practice all of those little um, hooks and they're almost like a U, curly cues of things uh, that that would help you or even uh, for the toe and this is like a, oops, this is like a um, nail right there. How would you shape your leaves to learn to draw in uh, squiggles or S's in order to make a shape? Um, and then these letters to color those in. Now if you use your uh, black Crayola marker and then you try to fill these letters in, uh, it will smear and you'll get black in whatever color that you put in those letters. So I wouldn't re recommend that um, to you to do. I also, uh, when I did this um, picture, you may not have all of the lines that are drawn in here. Um, I added them in and um, I'll show you what I did to color those in and get things started. So as you can see, here's my clipboard that I used to color while I watched television last night and um, my print on cardstock. Um, you can see that I made the uh, birdhouse look shadowed. Um, I used numerous colors. I did only use my Crayola um, pencils, but I used um, brown, black, and orange because I wanted to give it uh, more of a um, painterly look. And um, I really do like line and wash, like line and watercolor. So even if I uh, do something in colored pencil or paint, I have a tendency to want to um, give it more definition with some kind of a marker. So I have like professional um, markers, not just fine point Sharpies that I use. But I wanted you to see that in my um, picture, like here, there were only a couple of lines and I just added some so you could go over the um, blue ones that I did. You can see that I added more cracks in the wood or um, squiggles as um, because I wanted it to show that the, the wood has wood grain and um, you could do that as much as you like. And you could wait to do that after you do some of your colored pencil work. But what I did was when I had these lines and the reason why I gave you some, if you didn't want to do the, um, if you didn't want to show the uh, black Sharpie and make it a black line, you could leave it blue just like in our other ones. But you could um, make this one of those veins in, um, in the wood and color it darker. Uh, the way that I got this was I might have started with a little bit of, I'm going to shade, you know, some underneath the eave. I want to make sure that um, I remember that that is in a shadow. So I do some, and since you're doing wood grain, you don't have to worry so much about um, doing circles for shading. In these areas, we are actually trying to give the impression that it's wood. So going up and down and not being perfect with um, how you are coloring is actually going to work better because if you look at the grain and wood, it is not straight lines. It's not perfect. Um, really nothing in, in nature is a straight line or a perfect line. So you can see in this one that I did that. Well, then I thought um, with the brown, it wasn't quite dark enough or shadowed enough. So then I, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow around the edges and maybe this one, this uh, vein is going to look, look a little darker. And so I'm building all of my colors and I thought really the black is going to give me that sun shadow. And I wanted it to look like this line um, echoing, imitating this so that if the light was coming down, you would see that shadow. 
Um, and of course, light is not perfect. There could be other things in the way. So I gave this my uh, light accent to make it more interesting. And now in this position, I'm doing more of like loopy kind of circles so that my shadow is more of a shadow instead of those lines that you would find in the wood grain. So when I went to do uh, this shadow and make this a little bit darker, I made sure that I filled that in, but I did it in a very light fashion and then um, did those like loopy kind of circles as I'm coloring instead of lines. So you can see that that happened there and you can even see that on the, um, the top, the roof, I colored in with brown, but I went over it more than once. So as I put in uh, the orange to um, give it more interest and color definition, because I have to tell you that it wasn't orange, you know, the, um, the house that I looked at, but I wanted to make this look warm and interesting. So I put a little orange in, and then when I went back to um, color over it and make it brown, I have that hint of orange. And you can still see that some of the white is coming through. So when I color this now, I'm trying to like fill it in. Um, the light is still coming through a little bit, but now it looks not so much orange, but um, more like a maple wood, an orangier wood, or the sunlight is hitting it. And you can see that as I keep going, it gets uh, more, it gets darker and um, it does get more of a uh, texture. Now I just realized again that um, my board is textured because I'm on a, a watercolor board, so I'm gonna switch that out. Um, now I'm using the back of a sketch pad um, to color with, but if you can uh, see this up close, as I was coloring, I have line texture going this way because the watercolor paper has a texture um, that is going horizontal like landscape on the paper. So even the cardboard had it and um, I forgot that that was not going to work. So it's one of the reasons why I will definitely um, do this and sometimes when I color I have paper underneath because it um, helps make this softer, not as hard when you're coloring. Um, but you want to make sure that there aren't any papers folded or the edge, like if you were coloring on more than one paper, you might get that edge in your, um, that crease in your coloring. So you wouldn't want to do that. So there's some, there's a uh, watch out for that kind of thing happening. And then um, I wanted to show that there were some branches or maybe twigs in here. And um, when I colored with the black, I found that even if I went over it a couple of times, I um, I would still kind of uh, not get a very deep look. So I went back to my uh, Crayola black marker so that I could get um, that really deep color of like de that um, it's going back further in there and how dark it might be. So um, like I said, that's why I um, do numerous uh, mediums because I want to get that impression and I want it to, it to disappear. Um, I, I said that for the cross I did a combination. I just put um, some black on here and, and I tried to do that um, where you make a shadow on the bottom more and then you go to the sides and I, you could even see the circles that I did on the circle in black. And then I went over that with white to smooth it out and make it look more gray. Um, so I would recommend going around the outsides of it to give it depth. You know, when you use, if you want to use your Sharpie um, to fine point, draw around that and give it that impression, um, I would recommend that also. For the uh, leaves, what I did was, um, I wanted to show you that you could take uh, your Sharpie after you, um, after you draw around your Sharpie 
you could, uh, with your Sharpie, you could make more than one line and you could make those lines to um, create depth or interest there. So I was showing you that in some of these and I put it on a couple of other ones because I felt like these were part of a focus um, as we were coloring, but then I didn't do it on the uh, ones that were in the bottom of the page. I just made those uh, two-dimensional with color. So um, I was going to show you that what I did was that I just made my dark green the shadow of, or where I felt like the leaf was bent. So it seems like there's a dip right here. So I put green in the dip. And I didn't necessarily want um, lines. So I'm going over that that way. And uh, then all I did, I'm going to take out my good picture from the clipboard so I can just use my clipboard to color on um, because I don't want to mess up my picture. So then I took the lighter green and I went over it. I colored in the parts that would be lighter or catching the sun. So the way the leaf was turned and then um, went over the dark green to uh, get those colors to totally blend together. So I went over it lightly and gave myself sort of a uh, plan with all of my dark green. Where do I want my shadows to be? How would um, this leaf look? And I thought this leaf, even though it looks like it was standing up, I felt like this was leaning down and this was facing up, so it would probably catch more light. And then at the base, there would be a little shadow there. And this one, you would find a shadow here because this one is like scooping. So there would be a little shadow there and a little shadow here. And all I did that uh, with the darker green and then put the lighter green on so that you would get the impression of the shape of the leaf. Otherwise, it's kind of flat. And you could see like some of the center lines that I gave you. Um, for these leaves to have that vein in the leaf, um, I did shape them to give you a hint about which side was turned up and which side wasn't. Um, so where you could practice your blending techniques. And then as you color over them two or three times, which sounds crazy probably, you would then get this um, really smooth color. If you look at, because I did do mine on um, cardstock, I have a little more forgiveness. There's more tooth or texture to the paper than there is to copy paper, or it might be different. Um, but you can see that the this now has sort of a shine to it. It's reflective, and that's called burnishing. So I went over this enough times that it is now like shiny. So that wax has been smoothed out. Um, like if you were going to wax your car or something, it now has a beautiful shine. And that even happened with the two colors that I used for um, the flowers. So they're purple and blue. So I made the center purple. I also um, did show you in my um, coloring page that I put, and I do this all the time, it just makes things more interesting. I made um, shadows and dark spots for you to color. But if you notice on my color, my coloring page, I didn't do this for you in yours so that you could um, practice giving your petals little um, veins because most um, flower petals have little veins and you could make them long veins depending on the flower um, so that you could practice. And keep in mind like the dimensions, your perspective. So this flower is sort of facing up in that way. So these petals are not showing like this one, long petals, because this is where the flowers turn toward you. And this is on the other side, so you don't see the whole petal. So if you are going to practice uh, making your petals, you would do that. And um, you could even go back over this and finish that flower if you wanted. And I left mine empty 
and colored it the other way as if you were only seeing this part in these petals, you couldn't see them. Um, so uh, keep that in mind for your perspective. I will show you a little bit about um, the coloring that was on the birds. It had a little bit of what you might say is gray, orange. You might even say that there's a little bit of a blue-gray, which um, in mixing colors, we don't always use black um, because gray is actually a comp or even black, a compilation of colors. Um, you would mix colors differently. But for the purpose of this, we definitely used black. And um, I tried to show you like the highlight on the top of the beak here. So it's, it's gray, but it's not colored in with the Sharpie. I took my Sharpie and colored the eye. It was also harder to see um, around the eye, so there's like a little white spot there. But unless you really zoomed in, you wouldn't be able to um, get a good impression of the eye and how it might have that white line around it. And unless I used a white marker um, to highlight or something, I wouldn't be able to do it in this kind of drawing because it's pretty simple. So here we have spots of color and he had sort of like they had white collars around their neck depending on the um, the bird how deep the colors were uh, changed so you could do whichever one you like but I wanted to just show you that I did use the orange and the brown and the black to uh, make these shadows so if I was doing this bird here I would be putting um, brown on it, yes, even in some of these whiter parts because that white wasn't really white like our paper. And I want to and uh, its belly shadow sort of here on the bottom looked a little more brown, but I would use black under his chin. This one had um, sort of like I don't know what I want to call it, like a tie. I don't know, he had something under his chin. So I shadowed to give depth to his head and I went around these lines and even his beak and left a light line where the light, the sun might be hitting it on the top. And I didn't think that um, that was actually as uh, light as or as dark as I would like it. So then I went back with my Sharpie to do the eye and we gave him a little shadow underneath here. Um, so you could see that all you want to do is start somewhere, give him some highlights, give him some highlights on his head because he was sort of an orangey and yellow brown and then just go over the orange with a little brown and, um, it won't look so, so bright, so orange. So, um, if, and if you could, which I had a hard time doing with, uh, you know, these pencils and everything, you could put in those dark stripes that you would see here. And we just made ours really, really simple. So um, you could put a black line in each of these feathers, but don't fill in the whole thing because you saw that there were some light um, edges around those feathers. So uh, the only thing that I noticed that I did um, skip in the coloring page as we are looking at this, and I realized I signed it, um, so you could squiggle that out with your Sharpie if you'd like, but um, we didn't put in the scripture, which is Matthew 10, 26 to 33, and you could put that wherever you like and however you like. And the other thing that I was going to do um, for mine today was to put uh, one thing that I always want to remember. And sometimes I need to remind uh, myself all the time. And it was in the scripture, do not be afraid. So I put, do not be afraid, on the house that has the cross on top of it. And um, I was thinking about the birdhouse, a home for the sparrows, um, that we have a house that we can go to. We have a church. Uh, we have a home. We have the Father's house and eternal life. All of those images is that he, he has a place for us, and we don't need to be afraid. So I hope you enjoy uh, today's project. 
and uh, you learned a little bit about making some of those shadows and you enjoy coloring. God bless you all and peace be with you.